this butcher shop in Hudson. Uh, I was born and raised in Casper. I'm just going to give you a little background of what our family's kind of doing and where we're expanding. Uh, we bought uh, Wami Custom Meats back in October. Uh, it was about a six month process working with Jared. I have a ranch outside Glen Rock and he's been doing my processing for years and he does an outstanding job. And, um, I've kind of been following him and just became kind of friends with him and kind of wanted to to try to talk him into taking it to the next level and he was pretty content on um, just keeping it the way it is and then I entertained the idea of hey why don't I buy it from you and, and expand it and he jumped aboard and, and that's kind of why I'm standing here right now. So uh, just to give you a little background, we're full retail there. We've expanded the retail department, basically the front counter is what we call it. Uh, we have 22 different lines that, of product that we make or smoke or produce anything from smoked brisket to our bacons to our sausages to our brats uh, and we're, we got seven more products we've been bringing online we want about 30 different products um, for the retail industry um, how we're selling our retail industry uh, one thing that Jared has always been is state certified so the state only allows you so many kill days per plant it's called the plant profiling we applied for a new plant profiling back when I first started to talk to him in June state denied it and said we're not giving you any more kill days sorry live with it so we decided to go USDA and it was about a four month agonizing literally 15 hour days of paperwork for on Jared not me I'm not as smart as Jared um, to get us to USDA and two weeks ago we finally got USDA certified so we have five kill days and we can ship out the state um, and, and it was a uh, a lot of remodeling, different equipment. Um, we have the stainless steel, the entire building. It, it was pretty intense for the investment to be able to market Wyoming cattle out of our state. And that's all we buy is Wyoming cattle. Um, Jared goes, used to go through about 80 cattle on his own and sell for the public. We have 1,700 in our slots right now for public. Um, that's purchased cattle we purchased from our ranch and our growers ranch. We work with quite a few growers around here. Yesterday we just did a deal with uh, Six Irons. We purchased 140 steers from them. Uh, so we fill slots, and that's who was supposed to be speaking was my son. He's the buyer. He works with the growers, and he'll fill all the slots all year long. So out of our retail stores, and I'll talk about that in a minute, we'll go from 12 to 24 every week we have to produce for just one people buying in our stores uh, and restaurants. There. We started a wholesale uh, line and we started a restaurant line as well. Um, people probably don't know this unless they come talk to me, but we have trucks running out there almost every day now. Um, a truck today was in Casper. We had 27 deliveries. We don't have a store there yet, but we have residents purchasing from us in large quantities in quite a few restaurants. And one thing we're doing is, like I said, we just only buy wild cattle. And I've got a ton of Nebraska people calling me, a ton of Colorado people calling me, and I just tell them they're not born in Wyoming, we're not buying them. Sorry, but that's just our model for now. Um, some of the retail things I talked about, um, what we're doing with one plant, we still do processing for um, custom. I'll never get rid of that. That's been the, the whole business that Jared's been in. So we still have to maintain our custom. So our two day slot that's been filled out till 2021, we have not tweaked that. We still have to do the county fairs and all of custom. We get the other slots for our business that we're growing. Um, that will continue with this plant, but to produce more outlet stores, I'm building an outlet store on CY Avenue right now in Casper. Uh, I bought an old crappy bar, uh, bar called TJ's, tore it completely down, and I'm building a huge red bar in there, and it'll be full. Uh, we'll supply all the meat from here to that store, and it'll be all box meat. They'll cut it and trim it, and they'll age it there. We have aging machines in that building. Um, and they, but they won't do any smoking or the retail product will still be built in Hudson and shipped there twice a week. Uh, we have a retail location that we're trying to sign in Cheyenne and one in Sheridan. And we just purchased 23 acres and got our blood permit to build a new, a new plant in Wheaton, Wyoming. It'll be a little bit bigger than this one. We'll be able to produce 75 to 100 head of that one. Um, and that's a, that's a good thing for the other side of the state for us because we have a lot of growers on that side that we work with and we have to ship all the cattle to this side so um, and with the size of the fares that they're getting it's uh it's hard to keep a retail side going because jared used to shut down for two months 
have no meat in his counters, he just tried to do the fair. Well, we can't do that anymore. You always have to have retail, retail running. So, and at the retail store we bought, the building next to us, which used to be Lovey's Restaurant, um, which we did not put them out of business, as everybody thinks we did. They actually closed, and that's the reason it went for sale, and I purchased it. Um, and that is going to be a full grocery store retail business, uh, liquor store, right next to the plant. And that's where all custom will be picked up. USDA doesn't like people walking in our plan. They're, they're pretty tough to work with, but they make sense at the end of the day. So all beef will be dropped off to the plant. You'll do all your paperwork over there, and that's where you'll pick up your product as well. We won't have the public coming into the plant anymore. Uh, it's just, that's the way things are now. It's even getting tougher with COVID. So that's just the way we have to do it over there. Um, as far as uh, expansion out of state, um, we do have some box programs we started to launch uh, just last week. We can't ship out the state until the 15th of February, USDA rules. We're under kind of a 30-day watch with them. Um, they will uh, rotate, an inspector comes for 30 days, we get another new inspector for 30 days, and another inspector for 30 days. So they come from regions. This gentleman now is out of Billings, he's great to work with. Uh, we get another one out of South Dakota and I think Colorado, and they're all a little bit different, so you kind of got to work to their their standards. Some, uh, this guy's been awesome. I'm glad we got him to start. And then after that, they hire a permanent person to live at Lander. Um, we supplied them with an office and a bathroom. That's quite their requirement. So Jared doesn't have an office anymore, if you know Jared. Um, so we're, re we're remodeling the plant to put more offices in that. Um, all of our back office, accounting, HR, um, is all down out of Casper, Wyoming. Uh, I have a, four people there that do all payroll, everything runs out of Casper, Wyoming. Um, other expansions, one plant, the way we designed the new plant in Weedland, it can um, handle 10 outlet stores. So that kind of gives you the big picture, the four to five years, uh, is to have an outlet store to just little strip mall where you come and get your meat. They do some custom cutting in there with an aging machine. That's the model. The plants supply all the product to it. So we kind of have a, it's not a franchise, but it kind of looked like a franchise because everything's going to be exactly the same in every store you go to. That's pretty much what we're doing over there at Frank's. You guys got any questions? I hope you're getting my Facebook ads. Yes. Because we launch every Thursday. We usually run special. Um, our website was tough to deal with because with USDA and the licensing for our packaging and the ingredients, we couldn't launch the website we wanted to launch. Uh, on February 15th, we launch an individual, so you can have just cuts made how you want it. You can build your own box, basically. You have it shipped right to you, or you can have it picked up, or you can have it delivered. Uh, we'll deliver residentials in this area, starting on the 15th, and wherever there's an outlet, we'll do residential uh, deliveries. There's a new delivery company called uh, Drizzle. Um, they're for grocery stores. It's a lot like Instacart. We can't launch on them until the 15th. So you'll be able to order and have it picked up and delivered to your house from one of our retails if you're in their area. Um, so that's that's kind of the delivery system we want. For um, other expansions for growers, for people that are raising their own cattle, um, we've been working with quite a few of them. We just picked up a client out of Douglas, Wyoming, Falkenberg. He's private label, so he he, he doesn't have to go pre-sell the cow because we're USDA certified, which is kind of the gray law that got passed last year where you kind of had to sell the steer. But what happened is, and I'm sure, I don't know if there's any customers in here, you, you bring them into us with brand inspector and says your name. The state's coming down on us hard on that, saying I have to be the police of that, and I'm telling them I'm not going to be the police of that. because. They changed the law where if I was a grower, not a, produce, not a slaughterhouse, and I want to sell you a beef, you have to buy it from me first, and then I can take it to a processor, a state processor, and it's legal. There's no meat laws that follow that. Um, that's a real gray area because the paperwork has to come in that you own it. And they're doing this share group now, and that's even more complicated. Well, there's no policing for that let's just say but they come and look at our our stuff and say hey wait a minute we know this guy brought you 22 cows and here's 20 different cut orders for customers where's the paperwork and 
And so they're kind of coming down on us to be the police of it, and I just refuse to do it. I'm glad I went USDA because that's coming next um, on whoever's the other plants in our state. I, I hope they don't make us the police. But, uh, so what we're doing with other people is just doing a custom label. We'll go through the process, and you'll be USDA certified, and it's about a month of processing, and the state will stamp you a, your own meat number, basically. I got Falkenberg out of Douglas. We got on his own label. He brings us 200 head of cattle a year. It's his. He can sell it however he chooses to sell it. And he's got a big clientele, apparently, out of state. So it works great because more and more people in California, New York, and these other states, they want Wyoming beef. It's just become a premium. Um, so that's that's something that we're really trying to get the growers to understand. If you, just, if you want to try your own business on the side or something, it's available through us. And we do all the warehousing, we do all the labeling, and we do all the shipping. Um, he has a warehouse, so he picks it up and does it himself. That will be available to all the growers around here if you want to start your own custom label. Questions? So you're saying if we bring a beef in, and we just want to sell it to different people, Amber or something, we can or can't do that? By law, you can't do that. It says not for resale under custom. It has to go through a, be certified and the plant. So you have to sell it before you bring it to me. That's, that's the law they passed down in Cheyenne and it really muddied the water because it used to be crystal clear. Now it's, yeah, sell it before, but nobody's really doing that. They're saying, oh yeah, I'm selling to Joe, but I'm gonna haul it in there and my brand inspector says my name. I haven't sold it to him until it's all done and then he can pick it up. It's perfectly legal, but you got to kind of sell it before it becomes my plant. Before that animal is put down, it has to be in their name somehow on paperwork. And that's where the gray area is. And it's, it's really confusing. Now, me being USDA certified, you can say, I want this certified. You bring it in. You can sell it. It's got a stamp on it. It's certified. Oh, okay. You can do what you want. Oh. Yeah. But if it falls under the custom days, because we do still custom slaughtering, people don't want it certified. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, or if you go to another plant that's not certified, the state, because the state only has so many days they give each plant. Um, the most you can have is two. So, but if we bring it in, our own meat and have it butchered and have it inspected. Just that's what you, you can say, I need it inspected. And yep, yep. And then we pull blood, adenoids, brains inspected, all animals looked at thoroughly, and tests are sent off. And can you say you're getting inspectors from out of state now? No, our inspector will live in, in Lander River in this area, but he'll be permanently assigned to the plant and move here. What, what did you do to the oak gal? Well, those were state people. Yeah. So they, they, they're, they're out of it now. They don't have to come to our plant. They go, they go to every plant and they, they rotated them in. They couldn't keep up with two days. So they're short. I mean, the governor did a kind of cool thing given $10 million in grants for any, um, new business to create more slaughter because you can't, you're, everything's out about a year for everybody. And um, that actually started when his wife called Jared to get some cattle in and he said, I can't. And so then about a month later, this came out. Well, that's a great program. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, it helped a lot of the plants get some new grinders in and a new head catcher, but it didn't increase the kill because they, they didn't give us any more slots. You can only kill so many in one day. So we wrote back, hey, Hire more inspectors and don't give so much money away in grants. Put people to work and it hasn't got through to them quite yet. But that's uh, really what the state needs to do is oh, okay. hire more inspectors. But they're not the easiest people to hire. So. Is it tired more for No, we haven't, we, haven't, we haven't increased our price at all. We don't have to because we can kill more now, so I don't have to go up on my price. Um, I don't know everybody's prices in the state. That's, I really don't care. I know what ours is. It's, it's really no, good. So. It actually saves me a little bit of money to have USDA. Uh, the state will charge us. We do have a couple customers that um, you can't bring a buffalo into our building under state and have it slaughtered. You have to go to the ranch. So we would have to pay eight hours for an inspector at 130 bucks an hour to have it inspected while they shoot it. And it's under my meat license. So if they miss, I get rode up and fine. So we're glad we're glad we don't have to do that. We can bring them in the plant now. USD allows them to come in the plant to be slaughtered. 
Pardon me? Yeah, same day as beef. Yeah, they, they're on a beef day. All, all cattle and beef are on the, they're at the end of the day. They can't be uh, housed overnight. They gotta be brought in the day of slaughter. All cattle and hogs and sheep are brought in the night before. They can't be brought in the night before. They won't let us pin them, basically. They gotta go out of the trailer into the chute. So they've decided buffalo are domestic animals then? Uh, buffalo and yak kind of fall under a gray area, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of consumption of buffalo, so it's getting popular. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I mean, there's a place in Jackson that's all they sell, and it's really popular. Oh, wow. um, and I know the trues are up to a little over 600 head down in the, the Douglas Market. So there's Van Durham Ranch. And, Gillette sells about every restaurant in the country buys from them. They've been in business a long time. Yeah, yeah, a long time. stuff where it's from we actually have where the ranch is from and where the cow is from and it's kind of a I don't know if you I just like to know what I'm eating too and they won't do that they, they like to buy from anybody and honestly I could probably compete with them on the wholesale market just because I own the whole supply chain but that's really not my vision not really what I want to do I'd have to wholesale it to uh, make them happy and then they're in kind of control of me I, I'd rather be in control of myself we, we pay, a, I'm not discouraging the cell barns, but, and I just was at the cell barn yesterday, but I mean, our average grower is making anywhere from 15 to 25 cents a pound more from through our program. Um, a, because we want quality meat. I don't want to know what I'm not buying. I want to know what I'm buying. And so by that, doing that, we're working with growers and everything I send off, and we do two lines. We do a grass fed and we do a corn fed. Uh, we're ultrasounding everything and having USDA inspected on every herd we buy. We buy the entire herd. So we bought all 140 steers yesterday. So we'll have those inspected when uh, down in Wheatland, they're shipped there today. Uh, in two weeks, our USDA guy will go there and mark every one for choice or premium. So we know what we're buying. And then next year, we'll negotiate, hey, your herd is you know, 20% premium. This is a great herd. We need to keep you in our program. Or I come back and say, you only had 3%. You need some different heifers or you know we need to work on getting your, your your group a little bit better all you had was choice my price has to stay the same so that's kind of how i want to do it i don't want to do what the market is allowing because i don't think the growers are making any money i know that. they're not they're having a hard time making money i kind of want to set the bar a little bit higher and sell better meat. so you talked about the customers who like more of a one-stop shop. Do you think about partnering with people who make different products so that they don't come into what used to be lovies and they get well, meat, but they're also be veggies or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfectly, yeah. I mean, our retail sites can have cheeses and wines and olives and olive oil. It's a, it's kind of a, a butcher shop type. You get all the seasonings and all the spices, and there's a spice company. I think it's Saratoga, and that's not my department. I have a person that's in charge of all that. And she's working, trying to find as many Wyoming companies to somehow get in our retail program. Oh, yeah. I, she's out of Colorado. I apologize, but she's really, really good. So, she's a consultant. She's got four or five different products. Well, you can't blame anybody for leaving Colorado to come here. No, no, I don't. what I'm paying or how do I price what retail price is? What do they get? What do the ranchers get? For what are you pricing them? Are you pricing them? Trade them on, on great deals or, or what? Well, we have three different programs right now. So uh, if I buy an entire herd, it depends on what weight we're buying them at and how much we're putting them on feed and if they're all natural or if they're all grass. So it's, it's a formula that my son runs. So when they get to their fats, they're in that 
if they're supplying just fats to me, I'm not buying them at 800 pounds, or not buying them at 500 pounds. That's a whole different feeding program we have to do. So we gotta work on feed and keep feed down to get to our number. But at the end of the day, you're in anywhere from $1,800 to $2,300 for a fat. So you actually have feedlots yourself? Then? No, I won't. Okay. I do not. That's what I'm so you're buying basically? I have contracted feedlots right now. Oh. We send to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton runs a lot of our cattle. The Stevensons run a lot of our cattle. Um, the Trues are talking to us to start putting more in their system. Talk to Bryce. He's right next door. He, he's been feeding sheep for years and years. And years. I don't like that word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't either. But they're I'll selling tell you, sheep. Now. We make no money on zero. Really? It's, a, it's a lost cause to butcher. Yeah, the process of the process those sheep is. We have a sheep market. We have a lot of people to buy sheep from us coming to the store. It's I'll never get rid of it, but that's a bad day. <laughs> that's why we only do it once a month. What about hogs and other things? Oh, we still do all that. Yep, we have hogs. Every week we do hogs. Now uh, we can do 25 to 30 hogs a day. So beef, we run in that 12 to 15 a day, depending on size, um, how honorary they are, everything. Right. We get a bunch of bulls in, it's usually a 12 field day. Um, we, we go through a lot of bulls. Uh, I'm hoping in the next 45 days. We started construction uh, last Thursday. Uh, so we kind of had to kind of tear it apart to kind of see what we had. Yeah. Um, I'm the type of guy I don't, I like to build things that are going to last for 100 years. So I'll spend the extra money to make it a nice facility. Um, Casper's no different. It was supposed to be done in December. Now they're telling me May. But we started with just a shell. We were going to just demo. We ended up tearing it out the foundations. We found asbestos, had to get through that problem and that took a couple months and we just demoed it and started all over. So you don't have any retail that's in there now? Yeah we have retail our, our front counter yeah and yeah, we have a hanging yeah we have a curing machine that we installed there because we make our own pancetta now our own soft right. we, we make a lot of cured stuff we're kind of still experimenting with it but we do have two or three products out that's what's going to grow and then we put in our dry aging machine we dry age up to 90 days uh, mainly all we do is strips and primes and it's turned out awesome. And what are your hours? Husband? Over there, eight to five thirty. Oh. Yeah. Are and you when we get the store, it'll be seven days a week. Okay. Yeah, we'll be open on weekends over there. But now it's just Monday through Friday. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I did pick up a liquor license over there, so we'll uh, we'll push a little beer and wine too. What about the specialty turkeys? Thank you. Yeah, we smoke turkeys there. We do all of our turkeys. We have some in stock right now because we did a Super Bowl pack. That we sold out of today, and it had a turkey in it, so we had 40 some turkeys smoked last week. We did install another 500 pound smoker um, over there. So. How many are you going to have around the state before you're done? You got any idea? Just two plants is all I do. Yeah, okay. and I roughly heard you're have four or five. two plants and a, uh, up to 10 retail stores. Oh, okay. Outlets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can't really expand this plant much more for retail because it has so much customer. So I only have two free days. So if you've got a contract with somebody to purchase turkeys or then you bring them in and you butcher them? Or what? No, we can't butcher any. That's what I was wondering about. Yeah, they're, they're prepackaged and have to actually be um, brought to us with their label on them. And still, everything has to have a label that comes in our plant or leaves our plant. Just for contamination and tracing. And we put in a new tracing system. We went all digital, so everything is scanned now instead of written on paper. So at any time, the USDA can, at any of their locations where the big bosses are, can tap into our system and watch our tracing. And that's from the time it killed to the time it went into the kill room, the time it got the temperature drop. I mean, there's a lot of science to actually do inside the plant. Wow. So we have uh, four different stations, and each person documents what they've done and the times, and it's all put in a system end of the day that's all downloaded to the USDA. It's just put on a cloud and they can look at it and audit us. They don't physically have to come to the plant um, for the main audit, which is once a quarter. Any Go ahead. Another question on, your, on kind of your retail, if you have other products from other uh, vendors in there, are you looking that they have to be able to supply every one of your retail? 
Not necessarily. Uh -huh. No. I, I think there's probably going to be a seasonal thing. It'd be great if you know, we get levies done and we turn it into a farmer's market on one night a week or during the weekend or something and everybody can be, bring their produce and sell however they want to. Um, or they have a seasonal thing they can put. We sell a ton of honey. <laughs> when we for honey, we sell tons of honey. It is surprising how much honey we sell out of that store. So we talk to them and they're going to try to keep up with our other stores. It's just if they can't keep up. But yeah, we would love to find wild companies that can hit our supply chain. <coughs> What, what do you anticipate your labor needs are going to be? Uh, for the, we still have three openings at the plant. We just hired another truck driver as well yesterday and two more guys in the cutting room. Um, we'll put one more, three more in the cutting room and I need one more full-time, um, basically a guy who runs the smoker. Every day we got product going in, product coming out, and we're tumbling and we're, I mean, it's, it's a process every day to keep up with that. Um, so I'll probably put five more at the plant. But as I pull Jared out of the plant, he, Bree will step in and kind of replace him. Somebody's got to step in to replace Bree. So when we open up the supply chain, will, uh, Hudson will start growing as well too. We'll have more trucks. Um, as far as the store across the street, that's a seven person, because we're seven days a week. So there'll be seven people over there. Oh. That, just that retail business. Um, it's a, Casper's almost 35, um, just for retail. But we're open there from 7.30 to 10 at night during the week until midnight on the weekends. So Jared will completely remove himself from the business? No, or no, he'll just have either? to be at the other plant one day a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he'll leave on a Tuesday, get this role on a Monday, be there on a Tuesday, stay the night, probably come back on a Wednesday. Oh. Yeah. He signed up for a three-year three year tour. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's only, he's he's only four months in. He's got a long time. <laughs> earn his, his reward. So. <laughs> that it? Thanks guys, yeah, appreciate thank it. You. Yeah.